I'm Matt Mitchell with the Action Network, but everyone here just calls me Uncle Mitch. Today, we're gonna talk about how to read American odds, or as we call them where I'm from, just odds. If you're new to sports betting, looking up at the board at a sports book can be really confusing. A lot of stuff going on up there. It might even make you think you're back in algebra class, which is famously not fun, and it won't remind you of betting on sports, which is very, very fun. But here's the good news. It's not nearly as complicated as it looks. I hang out with a lot of avid sports bettors. Some of those guys are the dumbest dudes I know. And the fact that you're just watching a YouTube video right now tells me you're probably smarter than they are. Today, we're gonna cover three things. Number one, what are American odds? Short and simple. Two, while you should not feel bad about not getting it right away. And three, why do sports books even use odds in the first place? When you check out any sports book, whether it's online or IRL, the first thing you'll notice is that there are tons of games up there. Lots of matchups, teams just, you know, meeting up and sportsing it up. Now, next to most teams' names, you'll see a minus 110. And all that means is that if you want to wager on that team, you have to bet $110 to win 100. If you see a minus 150, you have to bet $150 to win $100, and so on. On the flip side there, you'll see some numbers with a plus symbol, for example, plus 120. And what that means is that if you bet $100, that's how much you'll win. You'll win $120. If you see plus 200, you would win $200 on a $100 bet. See, making sense? Congratulations, <laughs> you can now read American odds. Like I said, not that complicated, not nearly as hard as algebra, for example. Negative odds, that's how much you have to risk to win 100. Positive odds, that's how much you would win on a $100 bet. Reading the odds will also tell you which team is favored. And I'm gonna use an example here from the Action Network website. The Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots, they're playing each other week one. And because it's a game being played, I am definitely very interested in gambling on it because I love that sort of thing. And because we just covered this, you and I both know that the minus 127 next to the Patriots means that they are favored, means you have to bet $127 in order to win 100. You're betting more to win less because they're favored. The odds are also telling us that the odds makers predict the Patriots are better than the Dolphins. And usually better teams beat worse teams, right? Since the Patriots will probably win this game, sports books are gonna make you bet a little bit more if you wanna bet on them to win. And now better teams usually win, but doesn't mean they always win. In fact, crappy teams beat good teams all the time. And that's why the odds on the underdog Dolphins are a positive number. They're listed at plus 105, which means that if you want to bet $100, you'd actually win $105 if they pulled off the upset. Because again, positive numbers like plus 105, that's how much you win on a $100 bet. Odds makers believe Miami has a less of a chance of winning this football game, so they're gonna incentivize bettors like me to take the Dolphins by offering me a bigger payout. And by the way, if you're thinking like, Jesus Christ, these sports bettors, just $100 bets all over the place, that's not how it is. Uh, you know, Using $100 just makes it a lot easier to explain. The odds are the same whether you're betting $4 or $50 or $5,000. I mean, believe me, I'm not, Elon Musk betting crazy moon dollars on the Dolphins week ones. Don't worry about that. It's just being used as a mathematical example, okay? Now, quick recap before we move on to part two. Number one, American odds are as simple as understanding that minus 110 means you have to risk $110 to win 100, plus 110 means you would win $110 on a $100 bet. Teams that are favored have a negative number next to them. Teams that are underdogs have positive odds, and it doesn't matter how much you risk or how much you bet, whatever your bet amount is, the odds stay the same. Easy, right? And you're so far ahead of where I was at your age, so you're doing great. Now, just like the United States annoys the rest of the world by refusing to acknowledge the metric system or Celsius or beans on toast, we also have our own way of representing odds, which, in case you haven't guessed it here, we call American odds. You may also see uh, implied odds or decimal odds or fractional odds if you're listening to a sports betting podcast. For example, the award-winning Action Network podcast. 
you may hear a host say something like four to one odds. That is just the fractional odds version of plus 400. And now if you're a little confused here, don't worry about it. You're not dumb. The whole system's kind of dumb. It's just like learning, you know, yards or Fahrenheit or nautical miles versus regular miles. The, the more you're around this, the easier the whole thing gets. Now, in the meantime, you can always use the odds converter on actionnetwork.com if you ever need any help. Okay, let's do a quick recap. American odds just basically mean odds. You're not dumb. The system's pretty dumb. Beans on toast are delicious. Now, if this system is so confusing, why do sportsbooks even use odds? Isn't the point to not confuse people that you want to actually make wagers, right? Well, here's a hypothetical. Let's suppose you and your friend Sally want to make a bet against each other. You're a Laker fan. Sally is a Clipper fan. And obviously, I know no one actually knows any Clipper fans. This is just a hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lakers and Clippers are playing tonight. And because Sally's talking so much smack, you want to bet $10 with her that the Lakers will win. And the stakes here, again, they're simple. Lakers win, you take her 10 bucks. Clippers win, she takes yours. Both sides here are betting at plus 100 or even money odds. You're betting 10 to win 10. Now, imagine that you and Sally are both Laker fans. This is way more realistic. And you obviously can't bet against each other on the Lakers because you both want the same thing. So while you're complaining about it, your shady but entrepreneurial friend Jeff comes in and he says, you know, maybe he'll take your action. And we all know a guy like Jeff, you know, he's always got something cooking. He's always, you know, a little bit of a small time operator. You know, he maybe still has a pager. And Jeff's happy to help you out and he'll take your bets if he can bet $10 while you and Sally each bet $11. If you lose, he gets $11 from both of you. And if you win, you each get $10. So you and Sally don't love risking a little more than him, but it seems like a perfectly reasonable service fee. Plus, it's better than not gambling at all because, you know, what fun is that, right? After all, if you really want to buy something, you don't mind paying a little bit of sales tax. You take Jeff's terms, which are ostensibly betting at minus 110 odds. Now, let's say that Jeff knows two other people, and those people are Clipper fans. Again, hypothetical here. And they want to make the same bet on the game. So he makes the same deal with them, but this time he takes the Lakers. So now, no matter which team wins, Jeff will win two $11 bets, and he will lose two $10 bets. By booking both sides of the same game for four people, Jeff just made two totally risk-free dollars, and that's basically what sports books do, just on a much larger scale. And that $2 is also called vigorish, or the vig, the margin, the take, the house edge, or more commonly, the juice. And we'll dive deeper into that in another video. Uh, but you know, look at you, you're already learning gambling 102 phrases, so congratulations. <laughs> and now let's put everything we've already learned all together here, right? When you bet your friend $10, you're basically betting at even money odds or plus 100. When you can't find a friend to bet against, a sports book can serve as the Jeff here and they will offer minus 110 odds, which is basically a service fee to facilitate that bet. Now, minus 110 means you have to risk $110 to win 100 and plus 110 means you win $110 on a $100 bet. Favorites have negative odds, underdogs have positive odds, and you're not dumb, the system's dumb. All right, that's all we got for today. If you liked this video, if it helped you out at all, or maybe you just love beans on toast, hit like below. For a quicker recap of Betting Odds Explained, check out this video. And for all of the Action Network's how-to videos, check out this playlist. That's all we got for now. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.